So if you like, you can just hang out here in the space. You know, we don't need to come out of meditation since we'll be, uh, we'll be talking a little bit about uh, sort of a Dharma practice uh, as it is written in the Lojong slogans. And this does a quick review. Um, the word Lojong means, in Tibetan, it means mind training. Um, it's often how it's uh, translated. And yet uh, it implies a cultivation of heart, uh, cultivation of compassion. So in this sense, mind isn't just sort of a mental plane of our thinking, but it really is sort of rooted in compassion training. Um, and so a good friend of mine, Lama Willa, who, who's a very skilled teacher of Lojong, um, she likes to call it heart cultivation, which is in a way closer to the spirit of, uh, of what we're doing when we practice uh, Lojong. And um, in many ways, mind, the, the lo, L-O, in Tibetan, me, that means mind, uh, also can be translated as attitude. Attitude. So it's, in a way, it's a, uh, it's a way of perceiving. It's a way of looking out into the world and looking in. So however we configure that, it's really sort of the lens through which we're looking, uh, the lens by which we are responding to suffering when we encounter suffering. And... Um, so there, the teachings consist of 59 slogans developed by uh, the great Indian uh, Buddhist Atisha in the early uh, 11th century, who sort of built on Shantideva, this great Buddhist um, master and thinker, uh, who, just, who often in his seminal text, The Guide to the Bodhisattva Way of Life, um, talks about <clears throat> both the cultivation of compassion and the aspiration to be compassionate and uh, how, how do we basically practice the path of what's called the bodhisattva or the one who is, um, who is responding to suffering in the world through compassionate aspiration and in so doing cultivating, continuing to cultivate awakening through compassion. Um, and so Atisha composed these 59 slogans uh, very skillfully and uh, upon his, he wanted to, to teach the Tibetan people um, this thing, I, I have this sort of impression of him being all excited, going, oh, I want to go to Tibet and I want to teach them <laughs> this practice of seven points of mind training. Uh, and so there are seven points uh, among which the 59 slogans are dispersed. So we've been kind of working our way through these really, really interesting, amusing in some cases, and also very impactful uh, slogans uh, that we can use as practice, as affirmations. Um, and so um, Atisha on his journey to Tibet had heard that the Tibetan people were actually largely undisturbed, that they had pretty good disposition. And he got concerned that he wouldn't have any fodder to work with there for the teaching. And so he brought along his attendant who was this irascible really ill-tempered um, guide that he would occasionally use. And he, on purpose, brought him along on the journey, uh, in part to use as an example when he got to the Tibetans uh, to teach them these, these Lojong slogans, but also as a way for himself to train with them. Because he was constantly finding himself irritated and <laughs> agitated at this guy. Imagine you're the person you find the most irritating in your life and choosing to go on like a thousand mile trek into the mountains with them and doing it willingly, that takes a certain kind of heartiness, I think. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so we've been, um, we've been largely working our way through these. And in short, the seven points, we are currently in the third point. Um, but the first point is uh, train in the, in the pre preliminaries. So there are some preliminaries we discussed uh, early on in this. Uh, the second point is then the main practice, which uh, is where we find the Tong Len meditation, the sending forth and receiving that we did a few weeks back. Um, then the third, where we are now, is transforming adversity on, into the path of enlightenment, which is what I was just talking about with Atisha, who brought this person with him. Uh, and I can only imagine you know, for him, it was putting it to the test uh, on this journey to Tibet. Uh, and then the fourth is applying these practices to daily life. 
uh, how do we then make these teachings and these instructions relevant to daily life? Uh, the fifth is um, the measure of mind training. So it's kind of the scope of our practice, uh, sort of writ large. Um, the sixth uh, is have to do with the commitments of mind training, the dedications, the affirmations. Uh, and we're given some good uh, advice, such as give up poisonous food. <laughs> Well, it may seem obvious, but largely, again, these meaning, the meanings of these things have to do with taking care of your body, right? Eating food that's also good for you. Um, or, you know, not to, not to lash out in retaliation, those kinds of things. So in a way, they're codes of conduct here. And then um, the seventh are the precepts of mind training. And so it's basically an overview of the practice of heart cultivation. So... In short, those are the seven categories or the seven points.